These are the top stories of the day. We have SBF just got sentenced to a quarter century behind bars, and it's Fed time, everybody. And not only that, we're not looking at a weekly close on Bitcoin. We're not looking at a monthly close. We're looking at a quarterly close, and what we're seeing in the markets are going to shock you. It's time to discover crypto. Ow! Capital flight is coming to the United States. The dollar is going to zero. And that's what makes Bitcoin so special. You have to have gone through a couple cycles to understand. Once the price is able to clear this level, the breakout is on its way. This is your indication to jump in now. Thank you for joining everybody. And once again, we have special guests with us, Leo. Uh, Leo, people loved uh, hearing you talk. In fact, they've said, we didn't let Leo talk enough last time. Yeah. So, you know, we want to make sure we give Leo plenty of chances to speak. And Leo, I want you to say something before Josh. Leo, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, man. I'm just glad to be back here. Hopefully I can uh, enlighten, you know, enlighten some more people, talk a bit more today. You know? Oh, yeah. I'm Go sure ahead. a lot of XRP community members are, you know, maybe upset at you. But, you know, you you bleed XRP, you know, so it, folks, no, it comes I, from a good place. I hold a substantial amount. So for me, it's more of just like, <laughs> let me expose the truth, you know. <laughs> He's more piss and everything. Josh, yeah. how are you doing? It's a Friday day. You got the cap backwards. Yeah. Looking like you're ready to be a degen today. I heard we might share a degen pick at the end of the stream. Is that true? Maybe. Maybe. The Discord already knows. But yeah, we okay. will be, uh, we have to hit. Look, we have to hit at least 350 likes to share that DJ pick because it's a All right, I'll go ahead and say the same person who put Arrow on my radar put this one on my radar, and it's under a $10 million market cap. So we're talking about a micro cap gen that we're going to share at the end, folks. Yeah, but and again, it's a it's, base play, and it's a real-world asset play. If it wasn't for that guy, we wouldn't have found Velo either. So this is the third pick now that is... Yeah. Well, hey, hey we'll he to told me to get into Toshi too, and uh, Toshi's been doing great. But uh, we, you know, we said there's a Bitcoin options expiring. We're going to get into that. But also, Sam Bankman Fried just got sentenced. Everybody, uh, we're going to talk about that as well. But first, let's let's look at the markets because the markets are starting to get a little bit juicy. Uh, I did jump into a, a meme long. I can't remember if it was Boom or Slurf. I have to check that in a little bit. But Bitcoin is down 1.3%, and so is Ethereum, essentially. It's down 1.4%. But BNB and XRP are just crushing right now. And uh, Josh, you remember we were fading XRP and Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash, also one of the biggest winners. And so the big winners for the top 20, BCH and XRP, how does that make you feel? Well, you know... Icky. Icky. <laughs> okay. It I got feels... the ick, man. He's... That just gave me the ick. All yeah. right. Well, we got oh. the ick from that. Well, uh, there's some quality <laughs> yeah. projects on sale. You can see Chainlink is down 1.3%. Avalanche is down 1.4%. Uh, I was looking at Cardano. Oh, Cardano's moving up. Okay. So Cardano's up. Uh, Solana. Where is old Solana? Solana, largely flat. It's uh, only up 0.3%. Well, let's look at the biggest gainers in all of the crypto market cap for the top 100. And with... Is just still doing fantastic. Whiff is up 15%. Who's on pumping Bitcoin Cash? Why is it up there again? Uh, if I had to guess, I you know, I have a I have a theory. I okay. have a theory. So what did I market by last week? Oh uh, shoot, did you market by a lot? It wasn't Cardano. No, it was live on stream. I know. Uh you actually guessed it yesterday. Oh? No, it was Doge. No, Doge. Doge. Yeah. So I bought yeah. Doge. And where did I buy that Doge? You're also trading Slurf for a while, I, too. Yeah, I bought Doge on Robinhood. And okay. so I think, you know, Robinhood is just uh, one of those coins. There's not that many coins, so it has a little bit of a network effect where if one coin pumps, oftentimes people take profit, and there's only a handful of options. And so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, ETH Classic is also moving a lot today. Let's test my theory. Yeah. Where is ETH? No, ETH Classic is... Oh, yeah, it is up. It is so poking today. Down. Yeah, I was like, yeah, oh, so God. I, I think this is a Robin Hood effect. I think it's people Light just coin, taking Bitcoin, some uh, Dogecoin profits. Uh, so, yeah, Robin is probably the Robin Hood users pumping that. But uh, Dog with Hat is... <laughs> I'm, I'm to that effect, it's Litecoin, too. I'm impressed it's still sitting at the top when I, I genuinely thought the top signal was going to be when it was on the Sphere mm -hmm. in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. To me, that was like, that's an indicator right Honestly, there. Like, that that's is, when you go too far. But that, that's a genius. good point. He's bringing up that Whiff was on the Sphere in Las Vegas. And oftentimes when you have an NFT project like, all right, we're saving up for the big Times mm. Square ad spend Tuesday at noon. It starts dumping Tuesday, 11 a.m. Typically, you know, I think the Sphere, it did move <laughs> down this, 24, dude. 48 yeah, hours. Exactly. It was like, that's my take Here's profit the, signal. Uh, and then let's do open the image here in a new tab and get the full picture for the stream there. There you go. Dog was hat <laughs> on the Las Vegas beer. 
Imagine like just being one of the houses that like is in clear sight of this and you just wake up in the middle of the night and you're like, what the heck is, there's a dog. Imagine with a hat. owning that dog, uh, that type of dog. And you're like, all right, this is, I'm definitely in a simulation today. Uh, <laughs> people, uh, let's see, Dot. Yeah, we love Dot. I might work on a Dot script for around the blockchain uh, today. Pith Network, we made a Pith video. I was checking, it was at least two months ago. And so, yeah, this uh, go back and check out our Pith video. We we're trying to tell you that one early as well. All right, uh, let's look at the other winners. We have Litecoin. Uh, shout out to Litecoin. Shout out to Tom Crown. Filecoin is also moving up to the uh, upside here. Now we have a newer participant in the top 100, and that is Gate. Uh, Nick, is this Gate IO's token? Yes, it is. All right. Uh, you, do you have any thoughts on this one? Do not touch. Means we're in a bull run. <laughs> okay. Uh, why would you say do not touch uh, Gate? Is it you're just not a fan of their particular exchange? I uh, pretty well known that Gate is on the dark side of things. Um, okay, so I would not, I wouldn't do any exchange token that isn't like a top five exchange. Okay, just, just, that's right. just me. Uh, or if it's a really really small <laughs> market cap, like if it's if it's a twenty million dollar market cap and it's a top. 10 chain or coin if, if it's a dex sure yeah but even like if you're a if you're that small of an exchange you've been around that long like gate io has that's bad. that's bad all right uh folks we also told you about tia tia looks like it's doing pretty good today it is up 6.7 percent and uh now let's look at the big well no josh you got one up here too Ordy. Ordy mm. is moving Ordy nice. is up five percent uh v chain do we still yeah, have V chain holders? I know if you would <laughs> yes. ask three years ago, everybody had a little V chain. Yeah. Today, not so much. I'm uh, telling you, the V chain right, community is strong right now. V chain is they a very active. strong community. I still hold my V chain. You know? so what are your thoughts on V chain? Um, so it many, makes there's sense. So many you hold competitors a lot in the supply chain narrative now, so it's kind of just a bit of a tough one. But uh, they're like the OGs. So yeah. you know, you you come in, you're going to find out about them first. And they're pretty much going to like direct it, but there's you know whether people are going to look at that one and go, I want to expose myself to the to the higher cap or go to something new. Also, they just spent a ton of money on partnerships. They partnered with the UFC. I yeah. think they spent like hundred million or something on that. Yeah, a lot of money. They're like what I say. This is what you get your parents. Into. This is actually how yeah. I got my parents into crypto. It's like oh, they're sponsoring. You know, they have massive sponsorships with the UFC, et cetera. But supply chain makes sense. Blockchain makes logistics and supply chain faster, more efficient. Mm. And like, you know, your parents, more than likely, a lot of you are going to have blue collar parents that might be in construction or something. They go, oh, yeah, that makes sense. We need that. that it's actually terrible. I, I completely understand this. And so it's a very easy uh, utility to understand. And with having like the BMW partnership, the Walmart of China partnership, uh, again, they're kind of just stacked at that range. So it's yeah. a, there's a reason why it's a you know multi-billion dollar market cap. All right. Uh, so in uh, Roxy, you guys are awesome. I look forward to your show every day. I appreciate it. If you look forward to the show, folks, we bring you live content Monday through Friday, same time every uh, day. And then we also have videos coming out seven days a week. So make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you are subscribed. Roxy, we're rocking with you as well. All right. Now let's look at the big losers. Bonk is down 6.9%. If you're holding that token, you would not say that is nice. Fetch AI is down and Singularity is down. But I would just say this is a little bit of a cool down period for the AI tokens because they surged so hard before. And now this is just uh, cooling down from the ASI news. And people are kind of starting to do the math on valuation. Like, oh, okay, you know, maybe it's not as bullish as I thought. Floki is down. Thorchain is down. We do like Thorchain here. Shiba is down. But also, look at that. It is up 177%. Wow. Uh, very, very uh, big gain there. Now, Shiba, Leo, this is the top meme coin on Ethereum. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Shiba, the top meme coin on Ethereum? I just say, if you look, there's like the OGs because Doge is still performing. So mm -hmm. It's like you can't really hate on the the OG meme coins, but it's like if you're really going to go degenerate, like, do you want to go with the higher cap meme coins, or like do you want to go with? Okay, so you if you, all right, let's just deeper? say you're on Ethereum. Uh, do you have a second choice? I mean, some would say, well, the next one down is Pepe. Is yeah. Pepe still too big for you, or are you looking for those small micro caps? Honestly, uh, the, this is not even a joke. The, the way I do it is I just pay attention to like meme coin marketing. Mm -hmm. So like it's it's relatively simple. If, as soon as you start seeing like a a small influx of influencers talking about it, that's probably when you're like, okay, they're investing at marketing at this stage. Uh, you can evaluate the chart and where it is basically, but that's probably the best thing to pay attention to. If you're just jumping into a higher cap, or just especially of meme coins, I feel like you're just making yourself exit liquidity and hoping that it yeah. people pick up on it again. But uh, I guess people want our V chain uh, price predictions here. I do not think V chain can go to a dollar. Previous uh, all time high was right around twenty five cents, if I recall correctly. And I'd have to look at the tokenomics, but I expect a lot of selling pressure around twenty five cents. And if it exceeds that and turns twenty five cents into support. 
the next psychological level of 50 cents during bull run mania. Uh, Nick, do you have a V chain price prediction here? No, I don't. I'm not educated enough to speak on yeah, it. It's 16 billion. It's tokenomics aren't too bad. Like it's not too diluted. Uh, so like, you know, retesting those all time highs, that 20, 30 cent range, I think could be very possible if we get that blow off top in these markets. Cause V chain, it does have one thing. A lot of cryptos doesn't have or don't have. And that is that it's under Five cents, it's under ten cents, it's under. Yeah, a dime. It's a it's good a price nickel. for retail. Yes, and folks, before you say, "Well, price of a token doesn't matter; it's all about the market cap." No, retail does care about the token price. People are going to download Coinbase. They're going to download Robinhood for the first time, and they're going to see the price of Bitcoin at a hundred thousand dollars. They're not going to put their thousand dollars to own one percent of a token when they see Doge. Oh my God, Doge is fifty cents. I could have two thousand of this coin or one percent of that coin. Well, I'm going with the two thousand every time. That is the mind of the retail trader. All right, but uh, speaking of the mind, let's get inside the mind of a criminal, the mind of a convicted felon, the mind of uh, a polycule member. Yeah. Sam Bankman <laughs> Freed sentenced to 25 years in prison for Boo. multi-billion dollar FTX fraud. He has now been sentenced. I don't know why they have him so jacked with a Popeye forearm. Uh, I do not think uh, that is that is an accurate depiction of Sam Bankman Fried here. Uh, nearly two years since the implosion of FTX, the co founder of uh, the exchange has now been sentenced to 25 years in prison. He's also been ordered to pay $11 billion in restitution for his role in one of the largest financial fraud cases in uh, the history of the US here. Uh, they indicated he committed witness tampering based on the currencies that forced him to revoke bail and perjury. So, he intimidated witnesses. He lied on the stand and uh, over when he spent people's money. He noted that his social awkwardness was stated based on the testimony of his ex-girlfriend, Caroline Ellison. He knew he was at fault, but never offered a word of remorse for commission of terrible crimes. His mother's letter also had zero remorse, but said, hey, you need to take it easy on my boy because he's vegan. Is that really uh, what we've been reduced to? Um, he doesn't kill cows, so you know he should just get away with stealing billions of dollars of people's money. No, I don't. I don't think that is uh, how it's going to work. Nowadays, I've, I've that probably research. will take time off his sentence, though. You know, say what? That probably would take time off his sentence, though. In in today's world, I'm afraid. Oh yeah, yeah. In today's world, so I, I did a little research well, into the federal penitentiary system. Nick, I know you're real familiar because of your dark checkered past. I kid, I kid. Uh, but uh, Fed, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of rumors. People are mistakenly saying Fed time you got to do all the time. You do all the time. There's two exceptions to this rule. So you're gonna get some. I'm gonna put my lawyer cap on today. Federal uh, penitentiaries, you can reduce the sentence by 15. percent So he might only do 85 percent of his sentencing. Uh, based on good behavior. But there is special exemptions for uh, severe ex uh, circumstances. Typically, it's someone on their deathbed. It's someone who's 80 years old fighting cancer. It's someone who's, you know, like you know, asthma and they're in an iron lung. These people kind of get uh, a little bit of commutions there. But in the last five years, federal penitentiary sentences have been reduced. Uh, it's oftentimes it's rich people. And so yeah, I wouldn't qualifier. be surprised. We, we need to make sure they don't try to let them out in 10 years. What are you going to say? I was going to say that's the qualifier. It's just being rich. Being rich means you can not serve yeah, time. Being, yeah, it, it, it has happened for C sure. Can we talk about so how much rich. the U.S. government is printing off of crypto right now? Uh, you mean uh, Four billion from Binance. Bitcoin? Oh, yeah. Four billion from Binance. Uh, they're going to try and get 11 billion from SBF. Uh, they're just taking tens of millions from multiple exchanges. Uh, it's basically, I'm, I'm just saying it's a cash grab and it's like they're just regulating through enforcement. Hey, congrats right. though. The UK just got $2.5 billion in Bitcoin from uh, that, uh, that it was the Chinese lady yeah. uh, that she was probably the the patsy, but we don't really the, know the, the, the whole print, details Governments there. are printing right now. They're, they're stacking up. They said, look, I don't feel like market buying at these prices. I'm going to just take it instead. You know? uh, Truck Dano is wondering about the picture. Is there a certain casting uh, shadow here? And I rolled up. Uh, no, you can't see any kind of aberrations in the shadow there. All right, we uh, keep looking here. Uh, it came to light November 22 that FTX was once valued at $32 billion in its heyday, was unable to account for $8 billion of customers' funds, sparking a quick and unprecedented unraveling of the exchange. Uh, that said, SBF is set to call prison home at least until he turns 51 years old. However, 
The wonderkind of the cryptoverse wants to appeal his conviction following the sentence according to his defense team. Yeah, they're going to go in appeals. It's going to get sent up the courts. I don't think they can uh, do anything in the next two, three years. They, they got to throw him under the bus, right? He is the Bernie Madoff of crypto. They, he has such a close connection to politicians given uh, how much money he has donated. And I did a short form content on that. I don't know if we posted it on the main stuff, uh, but... It is not looking good for Sam Bankman-Fried. We do have this tweet here. Uh, you know, there, there's a couple statements from the lawyer. Uh, Sunil is uh, the for the prosecutors here. Uh, they've said they've trampled over our property rights. They've liquidated billions of dollars of crypto's assets. There's a token they sold at 11 cents. It's now trading at $2. FTX had $10 billion in Solana tokens. They sold it 70% discount from today. Uh, the judge, hey, I appreciate your points, but I'm here to sentence SBF. And I accept your assertion uh, that the claim the customers will be made whole is inaccurate. Yeah, they're they're trying to have a story. Hey, the customers are whole. The customers are whole. Don't let them uh, push that false narrative. There's a lot of people who are way down and it's not right that they uh, stole all this money, and at least three people have committed seppuku. Um, I just started yeah. watching that show, by the way. Uh, what, what What's your take here, Josh? SBF? Uh, I was just actually going down a rabbit hole because I was like, okay, is Judge Kaplan related to Aaron Kaplan, the CEO of Prometheus, but or Prometheum? But I don't think I found any connections. I was just on like Wikipedia going through like all that. But there is so far, I don't see any connection. So, all right, did did you hack their twenty three and Me? I haven't yet, and okay. it's very limited information out there on both of them and their families. So I just was like, you know what? All right, whatever. I'll just let it go. <laughs> a lot of people are upset. 25 years felt like too small given the gravity of his crimes. Absolutely. Uh, looks, you know, Charles is uh, John Deaton, friend of the channel, so probably the per first person I'll ever donate to politically. I've been both a criminal defense lawyer and a federal prosecutor during my career. In my opinion, he should have gotten twice that amount. If you commit fraud and steal hard work in people's life savings, you deserve a harsher prison sentence. You know what? You're going to earn a like for me on that one, John Deaton. Someone push him up above 800. I swear there was a rule. It was like for, for every amount, for a certain amount of money, every time you defrauded or basically did fraud for that amount of money, there was a certain amount of years added to your sentence. So how this guy has done it for like $10 billion and he's managed to pull it down to 25 years is... No, my question, I asked it on um, around the, yeah, around, the, <laughs> around the basement last night. I was like, do you think, like, if we were to predict how much he's going to do, probably less than 20 years, um, is that worth the amount of money he's probably made? 20 years for billions, and you got to hide it in some cold storage or you hide it in some, you know, paper wallet somewhere. Yeah. You get out, then you can probably get your Bitcoin out. Yeah. Like, let, let's yeah. assume he can capture this Bitcoin after the yeah. 20 years. Well, and how much is his parents receiving on the back end? Like, nobody he, else is going to jail. So what about all the other people that were, you know... He bought them, like, over a quarter it. of a billion worth of right. property in the year. Well, how about this? Prior. Would you do 20 years for 2 billion? I would say no. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing years. two decades <laughs> in prison for when I get out. I got... Yeah. And think, this is $2 billion in Bitcoin today. Who knows what that Bitcoin's going to be worth 20 years from now? So now you start Rude. doing some moon math, like... Oh man, it might be a hundred billion dollars in today's yeah. prices. <laughs> Would you do two decades for a hundred billion dollars in today's prices? I still am going to say no. I don't, I don't think there's any change number. With the, the extra ninety years. Is it, so. uh, the most important asset, everybody, is time. It's the only asset you can't buy more of or obtain more of. Unless you got a DeLorean that can uh, do 88. Uh, mm. Arrow with the healthy retracement man is going to fly. We got a lot of people in the office putting their Arrow profits into this micro cap. RWA play that we might share at the end of the stream here. Uh, what about Caroline? Caroline might get sentenced as well, but it looks like after throwing her ex-boyfriend under the bus, her ex-lover, she might get away with it. Also, she was the first to uh, collaborate with the prosecutors, so she was the first to flip there. I believe that judge is the same judge for the crazy lady in the defamation case. Okay, that's... Uh, I heard Caroline I was a great trader. She, yeah. she has crazy eyes, I will say that. Uh, all right, well, that's kind of bringing up a, a different crypto She's case, talking right. about sentencing. SBF, he's getting a quarter century. But there's someone who did a must, much less uh, severe crime, and he got a double life sentence plus 40 years with no chance of parole. We're talking about the founder of Tornado Cash, Ross Ulbrich. He was sentenced at, in his 20s. He's turning 40 today, folks. He was sentenced in his 20s. His crime, code. His crime, ones and zeros on a computer screen. He built a website where people could trade freely without government permission. In the process, he introduced the world. He introduced more people to Bitcoin. So yeah, uh, that is the Tornado Cash dev with, I believe, his wife, or is it sister, right? It's his sister and his mother 
yep. uh, there. All right. Wait, do, do we share DNA here? Yeah, I think that's his sister, right? Yeah. Are we look, looking similar? I've actually met his mom. You've met his mom? Yeah. Okay. Did you say, uh, is your son Robert Pattinson? Uh, no. Uh, how was his mom? What was that story like? Tell us. Give us Ross? more here. It was at uh, Bitcoin Miami last year at the RFK party. God dang it. You know what? I, know. I was stuck. Uh, I, I, I went to VCon <laughs> and I had a blast. You did. Yeah, you I didn't did. go to uh, Bitcoin Miami. I went to yeah, VCon I mean, she's, instead. She, it, was, it, was a very, it was an okay party as far as Bitcoin Miami parties go. But I mean, RFK was there and he's awesome. And then she was there. So when, when you, we keep it on that camera shot, I don't know whether I should like look <clears throat> at the screen where I can see your face. If I should look at the camera or should I like look down? Like yeah, and I'm then I can at look you, up like, at you like this. Well, <laughs> DZ, I was actually, yeah, just like on my fifth margarita in Miami. Chat, chat. What do you, do you want off screen? Do you want camera or do you want at Nick? Uh, what, what should oh, I, I should look be at? This when, way. No, I need to be this. I need to be looking at you this way. <laughs> Look into each other's eyes. Yeah, it's like the Brady Bunch. We have a uh, Karsten here asking. I have a question for Josh, aka Four Eyes Hater, because he's probably an XRP holder. Would you rather buy Al Grant or hang out with Diddy alone at his house? Well, oh. Al Grant supports Hillary Clinton, or you have Diddy, so you choose. Who supports Hillary Clinton? Yeah, I would, like that. That's a terrible of two choices. So Carson, I see who you're on. I, I see the side you're on. It's cool, man. It's cool. I we we love everybody here. Uh, but I don't agree with or condemn. I don't. I condemn everything you're doing. <laughs> uh, forgot to donate Bitcoin cash having in a couple days. That's why it's pumping. That kind of actually makes sense with the price action. Uh, RFK is okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Awesome. Silk Road. Silk Road. Uh, did I say tornado cash? Yeah, Silk Road. Silk, Silk Road. Road. Yeah. Ross Obrek. Uh, Obrek what's the tornado not... cash? The tornado cash is two it's, devs. It's Alexi yeah. Hertzev. Is they tornado still cash. got... Yeah, yeah, thank you, too. thank you. Yeah, they they should not have been treated the way they were. Either. Silk Road, man. Yeah, a Golden Child. Thank you, Golden Child. Uh, yeah, website. Yeah, just uh, watch a, a nice documentary on uh, Silk Road too. So I definitely should have got that. All right, uh, let's. Uh, we're gonna look at some Bitcoin history, everybody. But I, I do want to say the Bitcoin Cardano uh, trading pair oh. looks like it's making some history right now. This is the daily chart here. You see a trend line. We kind of look like we have uh, set off from that trend line. But now we're in some very, now we're in a very important range here. Uh, you see it acted as a ceiling right there. It was a previous point of resistance. This is Cardano Bitcoin. This is amount, a percentage of Bitcoin for each Cardano. So you want this to be higher if you want your Cardano to be worth more Bitcoin or more sats. And it uh, looks like, you know, might be bouncing off a pretty important zone, everybody. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a nice little pump. But back to Bitcoin. I know he just loves Cardano too much. Uh, we have, I said, it's not a weekly close. It's not a daily close. It's not a monthly close. We got a quarterly close on Bitcoin. Does this mean up or down? Oh, just wait. Just you wait about 10 seconds, everybody. Uh, trading above 69K following the largest quarterly options expiry in history. The largest quarterly expiry in history this is huge but what the yeah. heck does that mean uh so it remained above 69k following the quarterly expiry nice. event yep nice nice very nice very nice suggesting that the pre-having retracement may be indeed over so it remained above this uh mark despite experience the biggest quarterly options expiry event uh the head of derivatives of bybit told told coin telegraph we've experienced the largest expiration in history uh for bybit and darebit as well people may roll over or unwind their hedging position during the expiration time and the action of unwinding may have small impact on the price in the short term here over 15 billion dollars has expired uh this friday uh according to darebit and of this it looks like the max pain price 51k so most of the time i forget the odds is 80 ish percent most of the time, it does hit the strike price. Most of the time. Every now and then, it doesn't. This was just too far away for the max pain price. If this was 61K, it probably would have dumped to that. But because it's 51K, there's just no way it was going to happen. And while options uh, can lead to heightened volatility, the max price pain point doesn't offer an accurate reflection of the long-term potential, which is still... Okay, now it's just like mean a long-term yeah, bull. We're this, all long-term This is ultimately here. just extremely bullish because it just shows you how much bulls have left in their bags, right? Like we're mm -hmm. still buying, they're still holding, and now we're at $70,000. Nowhere near that max pain price because everybody understands that, you know, with the Bitcoin having the demand, the institutional buying, the purchasing power, it's coming and we're on a holiday for the banks today and so you know now we're expecting even larger inflows coming out on monday and it's like you guys <laughs> started panicking people started panicking bears were like oh my goodness it's the first day of outflows and etfs like all last week at sixty two thousand. like i'm not gonna buy or it's gonna go to 45k it's gonna go to 52k it didn't go down to those prices and now it's pushing higher and higher so 
you know, we will be doing a little bit of, you know, TA here in just a little bit, talk about where prices could head because we do have some imbalances at the 68,000 range, but we're on a weekend and there's going to be retailers and retailers generally sell on the weekends and just get consumed by institution on the weekdays. So we'll get to that here in just a second, but I believe we do have a special guest today. Uh, someone right, we've had actually right. on the channel before. Uh, so I'm excited. Oops, I know DZ's Ooh, excited. We, we gonna have, cook. Yeah, we're going to cook with the book. But Josh, welcome to the stream here today. Hang on a second. Hold this. I got to change his... I got to... Hang on. I got to... Got to change his name over. Oh, Sorry, wait, Josh. wait. He's changed his name. Josh, we're in the midst of changing your name here. And uh, Josh, <laughs> there's a comment. Uh, first out the gate, I want to get your comment on this. Cardano is making millionaires out of billionaires. <laughs> Cold. Oh, cold. that one made me laugh. I'm, not I'm, showing, I'm, sh I'm trying to tell people the Cardano Bitcoin <laughs> trading pairs looking like it wants to bounce. Uh, yeah. Before we get into book and all the awesome things that you guys are building over there, just, you know, a book is a token. It's a Cardano native token. It's on the Cardano blockchain. What, what is your long term thesis on Cardano relative to Bitcoin, relative to Solana? I think we all agree. Yeah, it's going to change the world. But some people are saying, yeah. man, these other coins are just going to outrun it. I, I don't know if that's the case with uh, Bitcoin, uh, potentially even Solana. What, what are your thoughts? Well, you know, I'd probably say um, I'm not nearly as knowledgeable about it as you guys because you're studying this and we're building something. So, like, from an infrastructure-wise, though, we look at it as the most decentralized. So I feel like it has the best, you know, long-term potential, right, at scale. So I think, it, you know, it does struggle with some issues. Like, it's not um, exceptionally fast, but I don't think as an L1 it necessarily should be fast. So I think there's some other L2 kind of type solutions that we're talking about and working with a, a couple of, of different groups about. So I think once it solves for that, right, and it can come online at a scale that um, like a Solana or a Polygon can can transact tons of transactions really quickly, like that makes a huge difference, especially for what we're doing, because we're talking about literally putting, you know, billions and billions of assets on chain. So they need to be able to settle uh, instantly. So I think it has a lot. Um, I mean, we're huge on you know cardano we're very bullish on it i think long term it has very very big potential just because it is so decentralized and i think a lot of obviously like solana and it's you know it's having outages um stuff like that doesn't happen in the cardano ecosystem which is a huge point when you know it's one thing when it's um you're trading tokens and some transactions will go through um, on an exchange, it's a whole different thing when a, a mass consumer market is trying to buy something and has you know some calculable failure rate. That's unacceptable, right? All so. right. Uh, and but one last question on Cardano: what, what do you feel about the token price for retail? You know, do you think retail? Am I underestimating retail, or do you think it will be a factor? Someone downloads Coinbase, they want to buy you know the next Bitcoin. They look at the price of Solana at say three hundred dollars. They look at the price of Cardano at a one or two dollars will that factor into their equation if they're looking to deploy a couple hundred bucks yeah i think so um i i mean i think that's why we see meme coins blow up right it's like mm. it's access to a larger volume at a larger quantity and i think i think the way i think about it in terms of you know bitcoin is a fantastic store of value um and it is a gold standard for store of value i feel like with um, Ethereum and everything that it has going on, it has it's it's quite a far ahead uh, DeFi wise, and I feel like it is a is being structured as a DeFi solution. With Cardano, what we think of it as is a a perfect chain to house media, right? So much more you know advanced media, the stuff that we're doing with our decentralized encrypted assets. So I think it, it has a different purpose. And then coming into that, you know, as a, a retail trader, it's like, well, obviously buying, you know, most people can't even conceptualize like, oh, I only buy a part of a Bitcoin, right? Um, Ethereum is obviously like pricing people out as well. You know, Solana has obviously gone crazy. So yeah, when I look at it at big L1s, it's like Cardano is the, you know, easiest place, I think, from a retail perspective to come in and buy a larger quantity and have a potential like, you know, higher return, right? Is, is Cardano going to 4x before Bitcoin does? Like, I think for sure, obviously, right? Like we would be at 4x even if we just got back to below the all-time high um, where I don't see Bitcoin going to 4x at the same pace, right? So yeah, um, I could be totally wrong though. No, I, I would agree. I would say Cardano is going to 4x before Bitcoin 4x's. Cardano is going to hit $3 before Car uh, Bitcoin hits, you know, 320k or whatever the number yeah. would be. No, we're only at 70k, so 280k. All right. Well, book is a uh, it's a book based token. You know, you have read to earn. You have some uh, true ownership with books. We're seeing more and more book censorship 
your, your token, you got book con coming up with Charles Hoskinson. Uh, people are super, super excited about book. They, you know, a lot of our viewers kind of have a little bit of a background or a little bit of understanding of the token, but a lot of people want the alpha and they want the alpha on centralized exchange listings. I don't know what you can share. Can you share that? Are you in the talks with some of these large exchanges? Uh, are you not in talks with them? Do we have anything on the horizon that, you know, maybe you could tease for us here? Oh, absolutely. I always come with some stuff to tease. So um, I do have some alpha. So we, we did sign with a central exchange. We're going to officially launch with them on April 9th. So April I can't 9th. say. Okay. Ooh, yeah. whoa, it's March 20th. Yeah, it is yet. Close. Uh, yep. Yep. We're 11 close. 11 days. And, uh, okay. So we got a centralized yeah. listing in 11 days. 11 days, everybody. You hear that? Uh, can you give us the name? Can you give us the size? I can't give the name because we are uh, contractually obligated that they want to announce it. So we are um, waiting on that announcement to drop. So we will right, obviously blink in Morse code. <laughs> blink, yeah, it is, it is a very top tier exchange. So okay, um, all right, it, folks, it, all right, it, you it, hear it, that? Uh, so uh, w what is the the long term strategy with book? Is it to raise literacy in you know world over? Is it to just have books that can't be censored by? You know, governments or uh, elites, quote unquote. Uh, you know, well, what's what's your long term strategy? If you just kind of sum it up into one thing, yeah, for sure. I mean, long term, it's really on, on the book side. It's to decentralize and incentivize knowledge, right? So, mm -hmm. we want to make it such that information is protected; it can't be changed. Um, central authorities can't take those uh, books away from people. Uh, can penetrate past uh, borders all around the world. So, I think that decentralizing knowledge is is key. Um, to, to uh, you know, holding freedom essentially, right? Um, I think the other component of that in the incentivization side is we've never had a mechanism ever that directly rewarded people for reading. So I think that's going to be a you know huge opportunity, especially in, um, in in other third world countries as well, right? When they can consume knowledge and they can can be uh, incentivized to to do that, um, and then take our token and you know they could trade it for other stuff or they could use it to buy you know additional books um, and it just it opened you know the whole entire protocol opening up the ability for people to share books right now they're locked in your you know your audible or your your kindle shelf and you can't give them away once you bought them or or sell them so i think just you know that it, it's going to open up a whole new world and i think you know the kind of the broader vision is like how does that apply to to all media right and so we have another our our sister property stuff.io that we're doing the same thing with with music and we just have a um we just got to an mvp status in our, our mobile app on the the stuff side too so we're going to be doing this with with music and hopefully launching that uh really soon as well yeah i've, I've used your mobile app before i bought a jack frick's book uh, on there uh we actually have an author nick nick is a uh, author here he was wondering can he publish a book and would he get paid for it? How would he get paid for it? And is there any like limits on how you can say mint? Does is he meant to meant to sell, or does he say I want ten thousand of this book? How does that work if Nick were to try to publish a book? Yeah, so um, a, a couple cool things. We do work with a lot of publishers, so if you went through a publisher, we could work with them. Um, also, we're building a self publishing portal, so we've mm -hmm. just about built out that. Um, v1 version of it that we're, the business team is now using internally to, to test it out before we launch it as uh, you know open to anybody who wants to come and, and mint a book but yeah unlike the you know traditional model uh he would be paid instantly uh you would get your your royalties as soon as the book sells um you can do cool stuff too where you could you could portion uh, you know proportion a, a a bit of that to go to maybe like a nonprofit or um, we actually work with a carbon offset too so it actually makes the book um I think it's called carbon uh, negative or called carbon neutral. Okay. Um, yeah, there's a lot of really cool things you can do that that you you know you uh, you receive royalties in perpetuity. Then obviously it, it trades just like you know similar to an NFT. So as the book trades, um, and then volume wise, it's basically just it's it's almost very similar to a print book. So he could decide um, we only want to make this many. This run will have you know ten thousand in it. Or we can also time box it. We've done this before too, where it's a it's available like from an unlimited quantity for a certain time bound period. So maybe for thirty days, and that's all that's all that will ever be created in that that edition. Uh, so there's there's a lot of options there. All right, I love that, love that. Uh, reading some of the chat here, uh, people really really excited about this. Uh, 
I don't think you read a book about that, Ed. All right. Uh, Cardano has a lot of good projects like book. I would agree with that one, uh, Woodsy. Uh, let's see. Now, there is an NFT that's kind of closely associated with your project. So if you want to support this project, you go buy book. And this isn't sponsored. I just honestly like you guys. Uh, you know, Josh, you, you did such a great uh, time last time. So we want to invite you back on. But there's also like awesome. a, a flagship NFT would I be describing that correctly? What What is your flagship NFT, your Cardano NFT? It's kind of uh, associated I mean, our, with you guys. Our, our, yeah, so our, it, it's really like our very first book. We did the Gutenberg Bible, uh, the original one in Latin that like was minted on or, you know, printed on the Gutenberg press. And so we thought it was kind of a cool homage to the first book ever printed. We did the first book ever ever minted and it's it's all in latin so you can't read it unless you can read latin but it was it was kind of a uh, um we really stretched the development team because we you know that that particular book is about 10 times the size of a regular book we put a ton of high res uh, 4k photos in it we put it we actually embedded a video in it that had audio just to really show off the technology and say hey this is a whole new way that you know you could actually have a, a whole class of nfts which is sort of why we we return them decentralized encrypted assets they're much deeper and it's not public right so you can only see it if you own that asset which is you know in, i'd say almost opposition to to pfp type projects um so that that's kind of our first one we use it a lot so we have there's ten thousand of them if you have one you get access to our what we call our og book club on our discord um, we drop a lot of alpha news there and um, do some amas and some fun stuff so it's it's kind of just the first one and we we really celebrate also if you hold it you usually get a discount on just about everything that we do so we you know unlike a lot of projects like we actually you know we mint a new project uh, basically every day um and so there, there's just an un, almost an unlimited supply of books there's 30 million book titles um so when you multiply that out times you know 500 to you know 10,000 units per we're, we're talking about billions and billions of of coming nfts and that very first one is the very first one so we we use it a lot to just kind of build our, our social channel and the cardano community is amazing i mean as as you guys know it's just uh it's an incredible community all right and now i got a hot question hot button topic here from crypto to toro now, I ain't mean to hit you with the gotcha, but this is a little bit of a gotcha, so I apologize right. in advance. Why did Publica fail so hard, and why won't you? Are you doing anything different? Um, so a couple of things there. I think with Publica, I think it was kind of early on. Um, when we tested it out, what we found was they were actually distributing the book um, via testnet. And the difference really like primarily was that um, the entire asset wasn't decentralized. It was basically just token gated, right? So anybody could go out and create a solution and say, hey, if you own this NFT, then you could come in and then you could see this book on this centralized system. The issue with that centralized system is, and you know, I'm going to get real nerdy here, like in the depths of like IP law, because I spend a lot of time in it. Um, the, the fundamental difference there is that is still a licensed asset. So if a publisher or author came back to Publica and said, Hey, we need to take our book down or our book rights sold, or they changed, then they, as the central provider of that could, could still modify or change that file or take it away from that end user. You would still own the NFT of course, but you would be inaccessible to, to get your book. So, you know, I think a lot of it was honestly like the biggest part of that. And they might, may, might have gotten to where we got to, um, um, just from a um, ideological perspective, but I think they were just really early and, um, you know, cool stuff. I think the other big issue there is they didn't have direct tie-ins to the publishing industry like we did. We've, we've built and started a an ebook startup before. We grew that to 6 million users and then we sold it to a private equity firm. So we have big, you know, chops in the industry. We know all the players and uh, work with them regularly. So I think that is, you know, it's, it's an interesting uh industry just because it doesn't allow new players to come in very often they're very uh uh suspect of any new type of technology so it's difficult to to come in fresh and, and try to get something going no that's that's a great answer you're better connected and there's some licensing differences and i i really appreciate the licensing differences because you know books you know publishing giants you know they're going to be bought you know probably bought if you buy from a small publisher probably going to later be bought by the giant publisher one of the big two or three and the next thing you know they're changing definitions of words they're changing the words or you know yep. you, you bought the i bought the taylor swift autobiography then george soros bought her catalog and her book right so next thing you know there's a travis kelsey ad at the end of the book what, what is this i didn't <laughs> this is not what i paid for all right uh well there's also another secret big name connected to your project 
you know, what is, uh, have you talked to the Cube? Is Cuban still around? I mean, what, what's going on with that? I always hear that's like one of the more bullish scenarios. Oh my God, Cuban, when he talks about this, this is going to be massive. Uh, what What is his involvement? So he's actually, you know, um, yeah, I'll give you a little bit of history on it. We, you know, when, when we first started talking with him, I went back and forth with him for several, I mean, probably almost two weeks, just kind of arguing back and forth about Cardano versus Polygon. Um, Ooh, I think the okay. thing that really, that really, I think made, made a lot of sense really to both of us was that even at that time, and this would have been the, the, um, kind of late spring, early summer of 2022 was our vision was always to be a multi-chain platform. Um, so we started in Cardano because our CTO is like a, a Haskell genius. Um, and we liked it because of the decentralization, but we always knew just with, even with our last book company, we worked with over 200,000 different publishers and they all sort of have their own particular needs. Right. And Cuban's a good example of that too. Like he minted his book with us. Um, we, we did it only on Polygon cause he's, he supports Polygon and he has investments in Polygon. So that makes sense. And we know that other, you know, creators, other authors, all these publishers and, you know, the hundreds of thousands or millions of authors are going to, you know, one's going to want to mint you know, to one chain and one's going to mint to another one and one's not going to care and, and we're going to help them understand the, the pros and cons of that. So, um, yeah, he's, you know, I think we were somewhat apprehensive because you see his personality on TV and, you know, he is the fresh. outspoken <laughs> owner of the Dallas Mavericks, you know, he's outspoken. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. He does. He does own a, a little basketball team and, um, and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he, I, I'd say he may or may not come to book on, but you know, his team's also going to be in, in the playoffs. So um, it's probably going to be prohibitive for him to show up, but you never know. Hey, maybe um, it's a home game in Dallas. You know, BookCon is in yeah, Dallas. You yeah. know, maybe, maybe you can drive by. Not like JFK swing by, um, but, you know, maybe you can make that little drive, you know, with the clothes top, of course. I shouldn't yeah. have made a reference It's been great, though. That, he, but, you know, the really cool thing is he uh, he does a great job of networking all of his companies together. So I actually, um, it's very easy for me to reach out to all the other companies that he's invested in, which is, you know, a lot in the, the, the crypto and blockchain space and, uh, and get connected. Um, so that from a networking perspective, like it's actually a really incredible organization. All right. Love it. Book. All right. Book is the name. You can check him out. You can follow him on Twitter, book underscore IO. Josh, always a great time talking to you. Looking forward to BookCon. Uh, go check out that project. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Josh. Thank you, guys. See y'all. All right. Appreciate it. Good stuff there. Really good stuff. Uh, pretty bullish on that token, everybody. If you couldn't tell, Nick, you heard the pitch. You're you're a former writer. I mean, did he give a compelling case for his project? Yeah, I am. I am. I'm writing a book. I'm, I'm just doing like 50 tips, you know, how to make extra money in your life. But all right, uh, let's get into Bitcoin stories again. Bitcoin printing a bull flag in a push to hit 77K amid the TradFi takeover. Uh, so really, really bullish there for, uh, for the TA uh, maniacs out there. So if that does uh, end up breaking out, looks like uh, we could hit 77K if you're wondering what that uh, bull flag breakout looks like. So potential 77K if we can uh, get a little bull bullish action there. Yeah, uh, we broke out of it. We're retesting it right now, I see. I think this is the four hour he's Okay, a retest about. is good. Ooh. So we are like kind of testing that and hovering around it right now. And so, you know, will we jump off this over the weekend? Uh, look, I think markets are bullish. It's I'm really excited for Monday, just with the opening. Right now we're waiting on Jerome Powell's speech. I'm going to try to catch it live for you guys. If he does come out in time, we'll play a little bit of it and see what he has to say. Uh, but that could move markets actually to the upside here while we're live on stream within the next uh, few minutes or so. But yeah, the four hour chart, looking kind of bullish. Looking bullish, everybody. All right, uh, Mark Yusko explains the mathematical logic behind a $150,000 Bitcoin price prediction. So we hit 75, we are halfway there, everybody. So uh, he called that and he was asked to clarify his stance. What do you mean 150 by 2025? So we did some math here in his Metcalf's Law model. I always actually love Metcalf's Law. Point out Bitcoin's fair value is approximately 50K on the pending halving is about three weeks away. Uh, further, he noted the halving event reduces block rewards. We've covered that before. Uh, point of this cycle is somewhat different because of the emergence of transaction fees alongside block rewards attributed to ordinals and inscriptions, aka miners uh, are able to make more money besides just block rewards. And based on this premise, he envisions a scenario for the fair value reaching only 75K. And he explained the factors that would influence this fair value. And he highlighted it historically reached about twice its fair value each cycle. 
Uh, and so last uh, cycle, fair value around roughly 30, but then we peaked around 69. So he's saying 75 fair value is going to give us 150K. Uh, do you have a Bitcoin price prediction for this cycle? Honestly, it is, it's sitting around 150K. I'd say 120K is kind of conservative. Mm -hmm. So anything above there is when things start getting really juicy and exciting. I think post 120K is when we're really going to start seeing like the real retail side of things. You know, when like mass people just start coming into this space. All right. Uh, and it looks like uh, Kelly saying Mark Yusko interview tomorrow in the BitLab. Now, Nick, you were muted. Uh, yeah. They didn't get to hear you. Nick, everyone wants to know, what genre are you writing? Are you writing the next great American fiction novel? Yeah, so my main, my main goal... <laughs> yeah, so here's the thing. <laughs> no, there's, actually, um, there's actually a dark Western uh, that, I'm, that I've been writing over the past couple of years. Okay, um, dark western, and it starts with the line: uh, "The man in black fled across the desert, and the gunslinger followed." No, I wish it did. I wish it did. No, this starts. <laughs> this starts off in the middle of the night. But yeah, so uh, a dark western, and then uh, I supplement that by getting my creative juices going by writing Star Trek erotic fan fiction. I don't mm. know. That must be that, has, that's a troll, right? It has a lot to do with Ferengis and their lobes. I, I just oh. don't know what I, I only I think I should just move on from that. I, 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 <laughs> cool. Normally I'm not at a loss of words. I'm never at It's like spot scissor. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh he yeah, you got it. You're right on. I got yeah, it. Yeah. Oh I wait, the it. Vulcan only, mind meld. I can only do it with yeah, one hand. Yeah, yeah, got, like, Who can do it with both hands? Can you do it with both hands? The Klingon yeah, I can, are very I can Vulcan I can't, I can't, yeah. That's crazy. I can Vulcan mind meld and then I can yep. also uh, turn that into a scissor meld. But that's a different whoa. thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Show in depth. Explain uh, step you know, by the camera's step. Not, you know what? Chat missed it. We missed how are it. you going so to we'll, we'll never me. we'll never uh, see how that <laughs> works. Yeah, next like, change the camera, change the camera. Go, go. Yeah. Uh, Gold prices Coinbase, right all the highs. Oh. Coin, Coinbase Close. sees third largest Bitcoin withdrawal in a year, everybody, with one point one billion dollars moved in a day. Uh this was actually uh, we also saw some breaking news, breaking news. Coinbase just had their world's uh largest USDC deposit ever about 10 minutes before we went uh, on air. So we just saw someone pull off a whole bunch of Bitcoin, which is bullish. And then we saw someone deposit, uh, what was it, $150 billion in USDC, which is also bullish. So on chain, everything that's happening with Coinbase right now is pointing to, you know, higher, higher prices. Uh, just be careful though. You know, we started getting too much convergence. That's when it dumps. Bitcoin preferred asset for diversification amongst fund managers. Of course, that's going to be the top thing to diversify. You got your old boring client. He's just in stupid S&P mutual funds, which aren't stupid. They're actually great. Uh, they're like, yeah, I should diversify with some silver. No, idiot. Buy some Bitcoin. Uh, so tell your grandpa, don't buy any silver. Don't buy any gold. Buy some Bitcoin. Who do you are? Who do you think you are? Peter Schiff. Who do you think you are? I am. All right. Uh, moving on. <laughs> I, do, I do have a quick question. I know me and Josh have spoken about it quite a bit. Um, everything seems so bullish right now. The charts, uh, sentiment, etc. Do we think there's going to be a Bitcoin halving dumping as we've seen previously? Or do you think just like the market's proven already, we're going to see something dumping completely different? Dumping after, before, like right before. Well, because last time it dumped right before COVID, yeah. but it was March. It was COVID crash yeah, it was with the, the COVID June crash having, as well. So not even the having. But fault. you can go back as well. It's it's always either like a, a slight crash and consolidation for a couple months because you know <laughs> leading into it, everyone's believing that this is like they think it happens instantly post halving that we just start flying. Uh, but I, 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 I the market's I'm, been completely different than we've ever seen before. We've made new all time highs pre halving. So yeah, it's like. It's, well, well, not this, really. Though. This cycle's a little different. Not, not really. Say? Adjusted for inflation, we're we're not near the all time yeah. high. Yeah. Well, we're near, well, but we're not at. We're it. still ten thousand dollars. Not even like we're like nine thousand dollars away. Adjusted I for know. inflation, it's seventy nine k, which still puts us at a much higher point than previous cycles. But like the, the other thing is like, I don't know. This time is completely different. Like, look at TradFi. TradFi is in shambles right yeah. now. Like they have no idea <laughs> what to do. Your your people that have gone to school for like they have master's degrees. They're all the, like world renowned economists. They've been wrong for like decade after decade at this point. Ever since 08, their entire life has turned upside down with the discovery of Bitcoin. And now we're seeing this new like a transition. Like look at BlackRock Larry Fink on Fox News talking to the host. They're like, this did better than you expected. I actually truly believe I don't like look, Larry Fink, very smart. We understand he's investing into the infrastructure. I honestly think he he even 
undervalued it himself. He's like, yeah, we did actually do better than we didn't realize how important this is. Now they're going to just move heavy into this, which can change markets in ways that we've never I, seen. I think yeah. we're going to get a dump that's similar to all the dumps. This cycle is very different that every single dump Previous. has capped at 20%, 21, 22, but they've all capped at 20%. Previous, it was around 38 and then 30. So now we're at 20. Yeah. I, I'm talking about previous bull runs. So, so I, they I think getting... we will we'll follow. It'll be the same, right? Well, we will have our dump, but it won't be that 30, 40% yeah. pump, dump. It'll be the dumps we've been seeing this cycle. Those, so that's heavy, my prediction. those are heavy dumps back in the day. The, the, and we, just, were, just, we were just there. Like, we were just yeah, there like, yeah, this is yeah. normal. If I saw one of those now. <laughs> good old Elon, you know, just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's a slap in the knee on us, <laughs> yeah. you know, like. Oh no, my God, when Tesla bought Bitcoin. Yeah, it went from 20K to 42,000 and then went back. Went back down to 30, oh, I think. Actually, no, sorry, I went from like 20 to 42 and then back to 30. Yeah, it would love to teleport between 40 and 30. Like yeah. it was just nothing. Like, it was oh, intense. yeah, it just lost 33% of its value. That's normal, right? But like that, that means we're early too. Cause like next cycle, if Bitcoin's at 200, 250K, like then you got to realize, yeah, those swings are going to be five to 10%. Also, also like uh, Technique Teak's uh, take here, Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, he isn't going to let this dump happen and make him look like a fool so he doesn't want to look dumb uh nick have you been seeing some of these he uh owns titles the world's for money, your so how yeah. do they do that crypto erotica fan fiction 50 shades of grayscale that was a good Ooh, one that, that is lost. very good kind rules of for fruit. acquisition of that booty so booty's like treasure you know well, so the ferengi are uh alien race that is consumed with getting money and they are have a very famous rules of acquisition and it's pretty freaking all awesome. if you want to like be a real star trek and crypto degen let me just read a couple of these. Ready? All right. This is for, for the this? Trekkies out here. All four no, of you. Because this applies to crypto. Okay. <laughs> Greed is eternal. Yeah. That's one of the rules. Once you have their money, never give it back. <laughs> mm. Diamond hands that Bitcoin. Never spend more for an acquisition than so you have to. So that's what the Federal Reserve is Buy saying at their board low. meetings? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They actually these got are, good advice. These are really yeah, good Yeah. If they had a crypto show. YouTube channel, I'd be yeah. subscribed. Never place friendship above profit. They have alpha, dude. Wow. wow. Yeah. These really, guys did not mess around. Man. Can yeah. you say that louder for <laughs> the 99% of the people out there? That's brutal, bro. <laughs> yeah. So dump that meme token on your friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. The, oh, here's, here's no, a great buy one. the meme I'll, coin, I'll then tell your friends. Yeah. I'll, I'll end with and this one. On them. All right. Uh, uh, LimeWire. Yeah. LimeWire is going to have crazy moves. Dot Wook. But, you know, I don't I don't know about its long-term success. But, yeah, it's probably going to do some crazy pumps. You know, uh, so folks, we are still going to share that micro cap at the end. We are. I, got, I got a funny thing to think about. You know, we have to hit 350 likes. So I don't know if we'll share it. I'm being real. It's only What is that? We're almost more? there. They just yeah, got we're chilling, we're like chilling. Just tap the lights, guys. <laughs> yeah, just a couple of you. Tap guys, the yeah. lights. But what's funny is uh, I saw a tweet, and this is when like the ETF first came out, and it was all these traditional finance guys are suddenly going to be exposed to volatility like in a day to what they would typically see in a year. Yeah. So it's like when Bitcoin went down just seven percent. Everyone, I was, I had in my head these like traditional finance guys calling up. Like BlackRock and something like, what the hell is going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. When you see seven like, percent on a bank you haven't stock, seen it's like yet, the bank's buddy. done, right? It's yeah. this company's dead, right? Yeah. It's going to be zero <laughs> in thirty days. Like, no, crypto could go to zero in thirty seconds. I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm not used to this. All right. Well, speaking of, uh, I, I told you uh, while they were talking, I, I figured, why not pull up the the chart on this inflow? Folks, I just told you record-setting inflow for USDC. Look at that green wow. candle. That's the green candle from four hours ago. This is exchange inflow for all exchanges here. We have Jerome Powell. Do you want to watch this live real quick? Largest USDC inflow Let's see if we can make it work. I have the audio. I I think this might be breaking news. Guys, one in the chat if you want to see Jerome Powell speak. Breaking news. Two, if you don't, we'll continue with the crypto news, but this is going to affect markets. Who needs Tom Crown when you've got Discover Let me reset this real quick because i got to reset it for the audio. One in the chat if you want to see Jerome Powell's speech. We're about to hit play here. This could be extremely bullish on the markets. Let's at least hear what he has to say in the beginning. Uh, let me see. Can I, get, I do have the audio. You need to turn it up as much as you can on your end. Okay, so I think we're good. Core PC, as you mentioned, is at 2.8% on a 12-month basis. Mm-hmm. That Your looks like AI. 5%. That's what we were expecting, and it's it's good to see something this coming is, in. in line CNBC is just terrible quality. So as you and, and your colleagues uh, at the Fed and, and at the regional uh, banks have been saying, we want more data, more good data. Okay, all right. So I think that, we got the gist here. What What's the title of this, though? Well, this is just um, a looks like a fireside so, chat more than anything. Let's take. Let's give it like back. one Over second. Chat the, wants to uh, see it. The second half of last year, we got what I would definitely consider good data right. uh, over the course of seven months, and uh, uh, then in January of this year, we got a very high reading, uh, much higher mm-hmm. reading mm-hmm. on inflation. And so February is lower, but it's not as low as most of the good readings we got in the second half of last year. But it's definitely more along the lines of what we want to see. What we, so what we said is that we, we don't see it as likely to be appropriate 
that we would begin to reduce uh, interest rates until the committee, the Federal Open Market Committee. All right, all right. Yeah, they're confident. they're going to talk. Yeah. Uh, um, we're looking at like what are the big takeaways? You know, just like last couple minutes here. Uh, someone was just tweeting this out, Evan. Uh, is the February PCE <laughs> reading definitely more along the lines. Of what we want to see, yeah, interest rates, yada yada. All right, so uh, we'll we'll see what the takeaways are from that. Probably put out a tweet. Uh, this was a pretty interesting story. There's a founder of an exchange, and in Canada, the Canadian, the Canucks, started sweating him. He was dripping maple syrup from his forehead. They forced him to explain, hey. Where'd you get your Rolex? Tell me, did you sell your Pepe? Uh, so they're petitioning courts to force the founder of this exchange to explain how did he become in possession of 45 gold bars? What is he, Bob Menendez? A diamond studded Rolex watch and more than a quarter million dollars in cash. Uh, they've asked for a court order that would force him to explain the assets, which were seized almost three years ago. But it was after an exchange collapse. So you know what? If you got an exchange, your exchange collapse, you're walking around, you got 45 gold bars. Yeah, so, I, I say go ahead and steal this gold I want to say the takeaway from this because we were a little bit behind and the articles have been released. So the PCE is, re, uh, is out, which the price expenditure index is what they base their inflation models off of, whether they're going to reduce interest rates or raise interest rates. They came out as expected. So meeting expectations, monthly was plus 0.03% and was below expectations of point or 0.4%. So people were afraid that markets being closed today plus a hot report would lead to a bad Monday. But this report is pretty much what the Fed wanted to see and means markets will probably react bullishly with opening on Monday. So I'll pull up Bitcoin's price action right here. Uh, it's again going to react retailer, like you have retail moving probably, we could see some selling pressure over the weekend, but the announcement would tell me that we're probably going to see pretty heavy inflows from BlackRock into those ETFs with IBIT and Fidelity's IBIT or Fidelity's Bitcoin Trust or ETF uh, here on Monday. Uh, yeah, I, I like uh, who is it? Not Zachary. I'm trying to see uh, forfeiture. Uh, shake and bake. Forfeiture laws are theft. Uh, yeah, back to the quadriga. Yeah. Uh, so Jerome Powell, not too much. It said markets were closed today. It's not Good Friday. Is it Good Friday? It is Good Friday. Wait, is Sunday Easter? Yeah. Yes. Sun Easter's this Sunday. Easter's this Sunday. Come on, oh man. my God! Where's the bunny suit? Hey, okay. Where, where, where you been? <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea. I was just having a good time trading these coins, and we're going to tell you about this micro cap potentially. Where are we on the likes? Are we we're close? There. We're, we're there. there. We can do All right, it. folks. We're going to go Boat. ahead and uh, I think we just get right into it because we got a couple articles. Dog with Bunch, hats. Jump moving through the on articles up. real quick and I'll, I'll pull this up. Bitcoin Ordinals creator unveils Rune documentation. If you want to learn more about the Rune and the Bitcoin Ordinals protocol, uh, they have a, essentially like their version of a white paper, kind of just uh, describing the minting, the burning, the visibility, the names, the amount, the cap. So if you want to learn more about that ecosystem, Go check that out. Uh, and Vitalik talked about meme coins, and he just said basically it's a good onboarding strategy. It's good to just get retail in, and I would agree. All right, so the coin mm -hmm. we're talking about, I was looking at Book of Meme, uh, expecting maybe a bounce there. I don't know if that thing. Look at that. Whoa. For a meme coin? What the heck? Wait, this what ain't is a this? meme coin. What, what it's a stable coin? Is coin. So yeah, let's, that's way let's, too flat. Yeah, let's set this the table. This thing's going to move in a sharp direction <laughs> one way or the other. Before you share, let's set the table. Uh, with what we're about to talk about, because this is actually going to be the first RWA project I've purchased myself. Uh, it's been, obviously, guys, DZ showed us this morning. It's insight from an expert, which he'll talk about in just a second, that get, not only gave us Aerodrome, uh, but is what allowed us to lead into the, the rabbit hole and research of finding things like Velodrome, which everybody in chat here, plus ones in the chat, if you made money off Aerodrome or Velodrome. Real World Assets is about the tokenization of pretty much everything you could think of in our economy. So whether it's U.S. Treasuries, like we're seeing with BlackRock and their new build platform, which is pretty much going to allow traders to access the market 365, 24-7. These are huge breakthroughs in our economy. I do want to get, of course, someone that's been covering tokenization for years. Leo, what are your thoughts on tokenization and why should people be paying, or be paying attention to just RWAs in general? I think it's just the simple idea of it's the next generation of the markets. And yes, that is a quote from Larry Fink. Um, if we, it, the, I've always said this saying, it's like the world progresses through efficiency and the current systems we have in place and everything that the, the way is currently is, isn't as efficient as it should be. And we have the technology to make it more efficient. Um, tokenizing assets is quite simply just putting, and this is what people forget is the actual scale of it is the fact that everything can be tokenized. You can look at some of the biggest financial institutions predicting that this market, bearing in mind how small it is now, it's in the billions. 
uh, could be going anywhere from five to, and this is like not my numbers. These are from, like I said, HSBC have said it and other financial institutions, anywhere from five to like 20 trillion in like total market cap value. Um, that's obviously not relating to cryptos. I'm talking about the actual market of tokenization. And that's liquid, uh, liquid assets, right? Illiquid yeah. is like in the high, high trillions. We're talking hundred yeah. trillion. Yeah, we're talking crazy, crazy yeah. numbers. So I think it's like when you actually look uh, at assets, it's like trying to find things that not just fit into the narrative, but in some way could support that transition. So tokenization isn't just like assets that are going to support in that sense, because you can really niche that down. Like um, LCX, they have Tiamans, the tokenization of diamonds. Um, there's a ton of real estate tokenization assets as well. Um, they're really niche down. Um, but it's when you like look into other sides of it as well, which is like interoperability. You know, if, if things are going to be tokenized, not everyone's going to be tokenizing on the same chains, uh, which means you're going to need interoperable solutions uh, to support the actual, you know, transactions that are going to blow everything around. So, uh, yeah, what what like BlackRock are doing with is it? It's Buildall, isn't it? Or Buildall? Mm -hmm. bu yeah, they Biddle. chose the worst name in the world. Yeah, like it's really a struggle it's to say. Yeah, that's another Biddle. one. Relio is absolutely killing it right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, NXRA is another really strong yeah, one. Yeah, I have just the, uh, the charts up on the screen if you want to pull it up real quick. Right. So you guys will see, like, we had Ondo. We had... Uh, Ondo's obviously the leader in the RWA narrative, and I don't know where it just went, but it just disappeared. Uh, but ultimately, we, we put out a video a few days back covering RWAs, why BlackRock and everything is kind of pushing these tokens. And there's been massive, massive gains, but there's a platform, DZ, that we've yeah. been talking about, right? Base, up and coming, probably going to be the next BNB. We've seen Aerodrome absolutely start taking off. People on chat are Wait a excited. Minute. So is this RWA play also a base play? And Matching like two hot narratives? Maybe. Doubly bullish And now, is base backed by Coinbase, which is backed uh, by BlackRock? I, bet this, I don't know. I bet this market cap's like 100 million. No. 50 million. Maybe. No. 20? All right. So it's high risk degeneracy. Yeah. Guys, guys there is no affiliation. Do, do, not, put a lot of, do <laughs> not put a lot of funds in this. Do not put a lot of funds with this. Do not put all your <laughs> net worth into any coin under $10 million. Okay. This is under $10 million. This is a speculative play. Treat this thing like a meme token. Only spend what you're willing to burn. Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't talked to the team. If they see this clip, they're like, stop fudding your coin. It's actually real. I'm just uh, want to have caution when you're looking at coins with $7 million market caps. All right. Uh, we're talking about Florence Finance. The token ticker is FFM. Uh, you can see here 30,000 followers. The person who gave me a really hot uh, play with Arrow Put Arrow on my radar, put Goldfinch on my radar, put Toshi on my radar. The guy's just uh, honestly four for four. This is his fifth choice right here. And the Duke of Florence, uh, this is the CEO or founder, sorry. Yeah, this is so Shil bullish. Shil Reuter. Uh, he's a father, mechanical engineer, Goldman Sachs related. Uh, okay. Credit Suisse and UBS in the Netherlands here. So he definitely has a little bit of uh, some connections here. Uh, also worked for Bitvavo, largest crypto exchange in the Netherlands as well. There he also met some uh, token people there. And now four years in, uh, now he has a new protocol. This was an Arbitrum RWA token but they just started uh, branching out into base. And it uh, looks like he's a car guy as well. Uh, There's a couple tweets down. I, I saw was it uh, where they were talking about it. Yeah, Florence, uh, This they announced this two days ago. Base is destined to be the chain for Masters of Coinbase, being the ultimate on-ramp to get the ball rolling. They moved a portion of their liquidity to base. So this is a base play. This happened two days ago, and the markets have just loving the fact that they moved over to base here. If we go to the seven-day chart, uh, you see, boom, they put out that tweet. Really, really nice action. Not only that, we just now kind of went into a higher high, and Josh pointed this out. Now we are in price discovery. Now that we're past six cents, it is in price discovery. Uh, if you hit market cap, very, very low market cap. I wouldn't do TA with coins under 10 million. That just you really doesn't it's make sense. It's definitely going to be a narrative play off of base and the fact that that is where institutional money like lies. So it's really like, with Biddle, of course, being BlackRock and BlackRock owning the supply and having stake in USDC's uh, parent company circle, as well as purchasing and owning Coinbase and pushing for a lot of that regulation and litigation through everything they've done to launch their Bitcoin spot ETFs. Base's platform is, in my opinion, at next BNB. And this is just one of those early plays on that ecosystem. So, All right. Uh, base might be a play. There. All right. Yeah. So uh, I ended up, you could, if you had to buy this, all right. 
if you want, how do I buy this token? Says people, uh, you go here, you hit markets and then there's Camelot. Which I didn't know so many people use Camelot. I've been talking about, um, and it's up from $1,500. But if you just click this ticker, it will take you to Uniswap. We don't have a, a wallet connected to this thing. So, and then boom, it's on Arbitrum. Uh, although they just moved to base as well. I bought mine on Arbitrum. The easiest way to buy this. say you have Coinbase, send ETH to your MetaMask on the Arbitrum network. And then just uh, come to the Arbitrum page here. Make sure you're on Arbitrum. You'll see it right there. Uh, boom, connect wallet. And not sponsored. Haven't talked to the team. Just someone giving me wins. And I'm literally passing it on to you. I just saw this message two hours ago. You're getting the message right now. I bought a little bag. I bought a small speculative like meme coin allotment here. I'm not putting in crazy amounts of figures. I'm not selling my Bitcoin. I'm not selling my Cardano to buy this. This is just uh, I'm taking some profits from some of the other ones. But I, I think that's all we got, folks. Uh, you want to tell people where can they find your content one more time, Leo? I mean, wow, I was going to say, I think <laughs> I think they know Josh, but no, guys, uh, I'm basically, I'm on TikTok. It's the same at on everything. It's just at Crypto with Leo. Uh, throw me a, a follow on Twitter. I'm going to get, well, I'm already very active on there. Um, and then TikTok as well is my main channel. So yeah. Hit me All up. right. And uh, Josh, part message is Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Take some time. You got a three-day weekend because of these markets. So they might be a little bit of volatile though. You know, guys, don't just pay attention to what retailers, pay attention to the institutions. You want to follow the money. And of course, I think that money is going to follow right into Bitcoin Spot ETFs here on Monday. We'll see you then. All right. Happy FFM. Easter. Have a happy Easter, everyone. Hey, have a good Easter.